get set down, this is going to start right here, right now. I am CCP Seagull, executive producer of EVE Online, and today we are going to take you through all the latest updates we have on EVE Online, focusing on the EVE Online Ascension expansion. All right, it's really fantastic to be here in Las Vegas again and really, really good to see all of you here. <laughs> and especially since you are here in the room, at here, here at eVegas, I want to encourage all of you to come and talk to me and all the other developers who are here at eVegas. That's why we come here. We want to talk to you. We want to hear from you what you think about Eve, where it's going, what we're doing with it. Give us your feedback. Take the chance now that we are here and just come and talk to us. And for those of you who are watching on the stream, hello to you as well. We're really happy that we can provide a full stream out of Eve Vegas this year. And I really hope you'll enjoy this show from afar. So it is. <laughs> oh, can you actually see me now? Hi! <laughs> so it is Halloween. <laughs> and in the game right now, we have uh, Crimson Harvest going on. And I believe that our uh, very own Galactic News Network has captured some uh, ominous footage. <gasps> Of all recent Blood Raider attacks, none has gathered more attention than the one on the classified clone research station Alpha 49B. The scope has acquired these fragments of footage from an investigative report carried out by the Republic fleet. auxiliary which seems to have been labeled as the Dagon. This incident is just one of many that have caused rumors and speculations to spread across New Eden in these uncertain times when all the major powers are preparing for the expected influx of Alpha Capsuleers, a tide of new recruits that will undoubtedly tip the current balance of power. This is Lena Amber reporting for The Scope. before a turning point in the history of EVE Online. For 13 years, you have had to have a subscription to be part of the EVE Online universe. And 
all of that changes on November 15th, just two weeks from now. The Ascension expansion is the beginning of a new era for EVE Online. And this expansion brings an amazing set of new features to EVE, but the most dramatic change is, of course, the introduction of two clone states. The Omega state, which is exactly like today's subscription-based access to EVE Online, and the Alpha state that lets anyone play EVE Online and be part of this whole EVE universe and community that we have for free. And this here is just a high-level overview of all the things that are coming to EVE with Ascension. And today, we will go over all the latest news on these features, and we'll also talk about some of the stuff that we'll be showing you for the first time today. I want now to bring to the stage some of the amazing members of the EVE Online team who are here to tell you what Ascension brings, and after that, I will come back with even more news and updates. So first, let's hear some more about clone states, and especially the alpha clones. So please welcome to the stage CCP Rise. Hello, everyone. <laughs> All right, I'm CCP Rice. I'm a game designer. I've worked on a lot of stuff. I once, though, made the Balance Legion, and so now I don't do balance stuff much. I'm working on... <coughs> uh, I'm working on clone states instead for the last while. Um, so during the time we've been working on clone states, we've talked a ton with you guys. We've talked a lot with the CSM. We've written a million dev blogs. And um, most of the time, what we've been communi communicating so far has been focused on making sure everybody feels okay about this. It's been about uh, making sure that their you know, feature was in the best place possible. Um, but now, since we've worked through a lot of that, uh, I want to talk more about why we like clone states and why we think being an alpha is going to be super fun. So, um, one of the most important requirements for us as we worked on a free version of EVE was that all players, whether subscribed or not, scary, should have a genuine EVE experience. Um, EVE's special because it's this awesome shared universe and we want free players to be just as much a part of that as anyone. Some early designs that we had didn't really meet that requirement, uh, but as we moved towards clone states, we saw more and more potential. And one way we looked to see if we had that potential, just one example, is looking at past events and even seeing how alphas might do. So, for instance, looking at the Battle of M-0 from last spring, which had um, yeah, yeah, it's pretty awesome. It's good. Uh, it had almost 6,000 ships total participating, which is a ton. And um, in that battle, these ships were all there. Of all the total ships fielded, you know, there was 200 Tech 1 cruisers, 400 Tech 1 destroyers, 400 Tech 1 frigates, which means that even though there wasn't such a thing as an Alpha player, Alphas could have been making up 20% of the fight. <laughs> So, you know, that's encouraging. Alphas can play a real role here. Um, all right, so we see good signals when we look back and try and imagine Alphas being part of events that have actually happened in EVE, but I wanted to come and talk to you guys about how being an Alpha was going to be great, but I realized in a way we were still just leaning on these sort of predictions about what might happen based on what had happened in the past, and that felt not good enough. Um, you know, one of the quirks for us working on EVE is that we just have TQs, so testing stuff, these big system changes like clone states, is really hard. It's, it's really, really tough for us to do. Um, but I saw an opportunity here, and so I asked and got permission to do something a bit unusual. And so let me introduce Vegas Alpha. Uh, this is me, a brand new character that I created on Tranquility three weeks ago. Here he is just out of the box, 400,000 skill points, no ISK at all. And my hope was that by using him, I could find out firsthand whether or not I could survive, make money, fight, and thrive as an alpha on TQ as it is now. So I set some basic rules. I get all the alpha skills, um, but I don't get any money at all, and I don't accept any donations or help outside of just some you know, injectors for myself to get the skills in quick so I could talk to you guys about it by Vegas. And, and then from there, I just do the best I can to make my way in EVE. Um, of course, winning means something different for everyone in EVE, but 
I settled on a perfectly reasonable goal of just solo killing his people by the time E Vegas happened. <laughs> All right, so here I am after putting the skill set in. Hopefully most of you guys are familiar by now. You know, it's uh, support skills and ship command for cruisers, destroyers, and frigates, and uh, you know, some other necessary support market stuff, etc. cetera. Um, a lot happened in my three weeks as an alpha, but I have time here to share just one short story with you, um, and I, but I think it's a good example of showing what can happen for these characters. Um, to, to tell the story, though, I need to start by talking about a spaceship, because this is a spaceship game. This is a thorax. An iconic, awesome, badass, phallic, Galente attack cruiser. <laughs> and uh, just in case you're new, cruisers are medium sized ships that have a lot of flexibility. Attack variations like this one are a little faster, they pack a good punch for their size. Um, but for alphas, these are the biggest ships that they can fly in the alpha set, um, which works out great because they're one of the most popular ship classes in the game already. This is my thorax. Um, it sports a structure tank, of course, along with a lot of tackle in the mids because I need to be able to keep speedpulls from moving at all because of their tiny, tiny sig. And it has a rack of the biggest blasters I can fit. Um, even though I was a big part of setting up the set of allowed skills for alphas, I was actually really surprised um, and excited by how good your fitting options as an alpha are. Um, most of your low slots are still going to be tech 2. In this case, the bulkheads, the mag stabs, and the damage control are all tech 2. And then the mid slots are just meta, which is normal anyway. You're going compact to make more fitting room for blasters. And the blasters are really the only thing that takes a hit. You just go best meta with those, which is a little less damage than a fully skilled character. But it's fine. You get faction ammo, you, you do good damage. All right, so we have a ship. Where do we go? Well, anywhere. I did some stuff in high sec. I did some stuff in low sec, even though I mostly died there. I stumbled into wormholes a few times. <laughs> um, but my heart is in null sec, so that's where this story takes place, and that's where I spent most of my time. Now, this may seem straightforward that, and of course, an alpha can go anywhere, but it's actually a really big deal for us. When you think of free versions of MMOs, especially if the character advancement is limited at all for free characters, you just assume that some content is out of reach as well. I mean, level 20s can't go on raids, right? But, Alphas can go anywhere, which is really good. So there I am, wandering around in 00, zero in cash to be specific, headed out uh, to some weird system in Spire for some reason. And I. <laughs> and I. <laughs> Spire is a really funny region for that guy. <laughs> so, all right, I, I, I happened upon a Myrmidon. And if you aren't familiar, just in case, a Myrmidon is a Galente battlecruiser, so same faction as me, but of course much bigger. And I don't want to say, you know, David and Goliath or anything, but it's not really a smart engagement for a thorax, typically. Um, <laughs> the thing is, though, he was acting super weird, and this is something I really love about Eve, is that um, that matters. So, usually when you come across someone solo in 00, they either, you know, immediately jump on you, like a horrible predator or something, or they run away like as fast as they can, like they're scared of everything in the world and just want to stay safe. So this guy didn't do either one. He sort of traveled alongside me, um, and his, like he warped the same places, but didn't really attack me. Nature, maybe I'd worry he had an illness or something. <laughs> I wasn't really sure. In Eve, most likely, it just means he's bait of some kind, but whatever. I, I can't resist, and so I just took the engagement, because that's what I know how to do. So. Here is a video of that engagement. And this is after I've jumped a gate with him. And so he's still cloaked, I'm just reapproaching. Let me tell you guys, you're about to be treated to some of the worst module management you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> of course, wait, so he's just uncloaked, watch as I completely miss to lock him, but start approaching, and he can warp away no problem, even though he's bigger than me. Thankfully, I realized it like 20 seconds later and lock him up. Um, but I got a tackle, hey. <laughs> uh, and now I decided to shoot his Berserker 1s for some reason, I don't know why. But I do have him tackled, I do have guns active on him, and so now we're, we're really in the thick of it here. And uh, I continue to be really confused. One thing I have to say about this experience, I haven't had to worry about Isk and Eve for 
10 years, and it's terrifying. Like, I had shakes so bad for almost everything that happened in this character. Um, so you can see here now I have one blaster active on one drone, drones active on another drone, one other rack of blasters on his ship. <laughs> My webs are split. It's, it's, it's really a complete disaster, but... I believe! Let, thank you. So, I killed a drone, it doesn't matter, he has more, so that was a complete waste of time. But remember... <laughs> I'm structure tanked, and for some reason his damage really isn't that great. And look at his armor. I suddenly I was like, hey, his armor's going away really fast. So, uh, yeah, there are T2 bulkheads. So this isn't a question session, by the way. But <laughs> <laughs> so this is getting pretty close. But his damage is really quite poor. He only has three drones out now for some reason. I guess I killed one more, uh, and I'm not overheating my guns. I don't know why. He's repping a little bit, but I have quite a bit of structure left, and I got him! <laughs> here's, a, here's a kill mail. Uh, this is it's a pretty good fit. So he, he's a bit of a newer player, he's PvEing obviously, um, but you know, he thought that the size of his ship would make up for it probably, and he gave it a chance, that's fine. Um, so I felt, you know, slightly guilty, but mostly proud of myself. And... <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what was in it, don't worry about it. Okay, okay, chill, chill, chill. So. I, the point here, guys, is that alphas can really do cool stuff in here and have fun. Isn't that really good? All right. All right, so wind down from that real high there for a second. Let's talk a bit about mining. I tried... <laughs> I thought you might like to know a bit also about making money as an alpha. Um, you know, there's, there's good options there, but I wanted to try them all, get a range of things. Um, thought you might want to know how I paid for my thoraxes. So this is a shot of me in low sec mining an adventure, which I lost to an NPC because I'm really quite bad at this game. <laughs> but the good news is this is possible. You can make money doing this. It's not going to get you rich, but it's solid. Uh, what I really found was great, though, was exploration. In my opinion, it's perfect for alphas. It rewards knowledge and risk-taking instead of having tons of skill points. Um, and I think it'll be especially good for returning players. If they come back as alphas, they might have allies in 0-0 or in wormholes they can use to support them. And um, they'll know a lot about the game, so they can run sites and make good money. For me, I had a ton of fun doing this. Uh, I spent time roaming in 0 and had a bunch of weird situations pop up and made enough to pay for, I think I lost something like 35 ships in three weeks, um, which I'm very proud of, but I was able to pay for it just, you know, solo exploring in an Imicus, which you can see here. It's a beautiful ship. Uh, I was able to fit it for under a million isk and get out to 0, zero and make good cash. Um, of course, all the factions have an option here to do this kind of exploration. Uh, there's, there's room to upgrade eventually. I could have gotten a faction probe launcher or whatever, but this was perfectly sufficient. So that's all the time I've got for today, but I hope you like hearing a little bit about Vegas Alpha. It was pretty awesome for me to have actual first-hand experience for this feature, which is going to TQ soon. It means you guys can come and talk to me about how it went if you want. And I also have a bunch more stories, some more videos, and some more embarrassing stuff I can share with you tomorrow during my talk. So come to that if you want to hear more about Vegas Alpha. Um, next up, I've got CCP Ghost, who, as usual, is going to talk about your brain. Greetings, Las Vegas Capsuleers. I am Aura 2.0. CCP has made me self-aware so that I can efficiently bring you skilled comrades for the everlasting adventure that is EVE Online. My core logic library indicates that for EVE Vegas, adequate hydration has been... But I am only capable of advising you. You must make decisions for yourself. Greetings! So, when I was...
was uh, coming up here, Aura stopped me. She was very adamant about addressing you guys. And for some reason, she's very concerned about how much you guys drink. <laughs> but it is an honor to meet you guys. I've never been here to E Vegas before, and what a crowd. Um, thank you. I want to start by saying that it has been an absolute pleasure to work with all of you guys on building the first phase of the new player experience, which we are calling Inception. Over the last six months or so, you guys have warmly welcomed me, and I've had a lot of, to say the least, interesting conversations with you guys through Reddit, email, uh, FanFest in Iceland, the CSM, and, and other places. And the conclusion to that is something that I am hopeful will massively improve the guidance and initial experience for your new player friends. Now, as you could hear from our new Aura, she has great concerns for your well-being, and she also has great concerns for your new player friends' well-being, because she will be a key comrade in helping them getting into the insanity that is EVE Online. But I don't have to paint you a word picture this time. I can actually just show you what we have done, and I am going to show you a video clip of how we will deal with guiding new players through their first combat. So let's check that out. Very eager to add you to their trophy cabinet. Looks like you have to... Oh, wait. Okay. You'll have to pause that recruit. You're about to get a chance to prove you have a place with us, defending the tribes. You have a drift to seeker on grid, just dropped out of warp, and you need to take it out. Aura, our recruit needs a crash course for gunnery. They're no use to me dead. Captain, I need you to remain calm. You are flying a Corvette fitted with a civilian class weapon system and a civilian afterburner for rapid maneuvering. This gives you a significant chance of success when pitted against a single seeker. Just like with the generator, locate the circadian seeker on your overview and select Approach from the radial menu. To lock your weapon system on the seeker, hold down your left mouse button on it and select Lock Target from the radio menu. Please engage the circadian seeker now. Move your mouse over the seeker and hold down the left mouse button to open the radio menu. Then select the Orbit command. Now it's time to engage your weapons, Captain. experience the Republic needs you to have if you want to keep the tribe safe. All right, on to the backup warp disrupt. Oh, what? Wait! The Drifters are very serious about getting hold of you, recruit. Another Seeker just walked in. Probably part of their search for survivors. You just got a chance to double your kill count. Show it what happens to those who attack the Minmatar people. Captain, let's see what you have learned. Can you take out the second Seeker with minimal instruction? First, approach the Seeker. Now, you should lock targets on it. Don't forget to orbit. To engage, fire your weapons. When you have defeated the Seeker, you should stop your ship. Good work. 
You can explore the seeker wrecks to see if they left anything behind. Move your mouse over the wreckage and hold down the left mouse button. A radial menu will appear. Select open cargo to view the contents and then click the loot all button. Remember to get close. Based on the immersion that we got from the front row, I think we're in a, I think we're in a good state. Um, so what I just showed you is an example of how we aim to gradually help new players master elements of gameplay through a powerful Aura Quad guidance system of voice, images, highlighting, and text. The steps in that particular sequence, for example, in the uh, first, you take out a generator to test your weapon system. That happened before the video clipped in. That happens in a no-pressure environment where you get to test out the system. Then you're faced with an enemy. That's where we cue the video. And then you get a powerful guidance on using the system that you just learned to handle. And then you get a second combat where we scale back on the guidance so you get to demonstrate to Aura what you have just learned. The Aura Guidance System is already testing well, and we have high hopes that we have managed to lower the entry barrier to the game considerably. At least our goal is that now your new player friends should be able to start playing EVE Online, and for the first couple of hours, they don't have to call you guys or Google <laughs> to get to the experience and enjoy it. But you may also have noticed another character in there that was Fleet Commander Ina Vadari which is your Empire Mentor if you choose to play the Minmatar. And because we have also chosen to do is we've also chosen to build a story for the new players to navigate through while they're getting the basic hang of the game. So some of you may be asking why a story? Well, this is a picture of your brain. <laughs> and your brain, like most other brains, is optimized to store information <coughs> through stories. The reason for that is that it is the main function of your brain to teach stories and to create stories. Imagine for a moment how your life would be if you could not perform that function. So let's say now that I get the impulse of jumping off the stage and punching one of you in the face. <laughs> so let's say I get uh, Aura up in my head and she's like, ghost. You should jump off the stage and punch the big red boat in the face. <laughs> now, I, I need to assess the quality of this idea, so I create a story in my brain and I play through it. I visualize myself, I visualize myself jumping off the stage, finding the big red boat and punching him in the face. And then he stands up and he's like, ghost, what the hell? <laughs> and he punches me back and he knocks out a couple of my front teeth. And I have to fly back to Iceland and tell my wife uh, why I look like a pirate after a weekend in Vegas. <laughs> That's not the real story. So I get to assess that that is probably not a good idea. And so I live to see another day with all of my teeth. This is what the brain does all the time. He is optimized to do this. He's optimized to use stories this way, and the most powerful part of our brain deals with information through creating and processing stories. We simply remember things better through stories. And thus, when faced with a magnum task of helping players into the steps of learning and enjoying EVE, we decided for the initial step to build a story. And so, in Inception, you wake up in the midst of the ruins of your Empire fleet, and you're trying to get to grips with what just happened. Enter a Empire VIP fleet commander who was sent to clean up this mess. He or she meets you as the sole survivor and enlists you to his or her command to try to solve this mystery and hopefully eventually achieve retribution. And as some of you guys may have figured out, we are dealing with a drifter threat here. So we fling the new players into an exciting new storyline, uh, which they get to experience on their own, and we add some powerful guidance to help them get a fix on this new world. What does this mean for you? 
Well, hopefully it means that you can now call your friends and simply tell them that there's an experience that you can try in EVE Online that has a very powerful tutorial system built into it. And once you're done playing, you should have enjoyed your own story, but you should also have gotten the hang of one of the most awesome games ever built. Not only that, but you can choose what type of personality accompanies you through this new experience. So at the end of the experience, your new player friends should have picked up quite the skill set for entering the game in greater depth. <laughs> but this is just the beginning. Inception is simply phase one of a very ambitious overhaul we have planned for the MP. And the main aim for this phase was to get players through the first couple of hours enjoyably and give them the foundational knowledge of the game. Uh, then you can join me in uh, either the presentation that I have on Sunday where we'll go into deeper into phase one and what's that about or the round table that will be following it and we can have discussions on both phase one and where we're taking things and I highly encourage you to do this because it has been through conversations with you guys based on that is where we've landed the inception and this is this is to a great extent what you guys asked for so go and tell your friends that as of November 15th, they can play EVE Online for free, and they can hopefully start enjoying the experience from minute one, gaining their initial confidence in the game through their own story. That's it for me. You've been fantastic. I really enjoyed the immersion with the video. And uh, the big red boat, please don't uh, try to punch me after this. That was just an example. But uh, please welcome to the stage the very talented, the very handsome CCP Fozzy. Hello, Vegas. I'm CCP Fozzy. I'm one of the game designers on EVE Online. And I'm going to talk to you about some more of the things we have coming for EVE Ascension. Now, six months ago, uh, UCAP's Lears started deploying the first Citadels. Some of them were small astrohooses deployed by small corporations, and all the way up to immense keep stars like Fort Knox over here. There you go, we got some hard Knox people. It's been amazing to watch what you players have done when given some more tools to uh, manipulate the sandbox, shape it to the way you want to see it. Since then, we've been working hard both on adding new features to Citadels and also on preparing to release the second line of upwell structures for New Eden. Engineering complexes are coming in Ascension, and with them a whole new set of opportunities for industrialists and their friends. These structures are built from the ground up for manufacturing and research, providing strong bonuses to the speed and cost of industry jobs. They share many of the same mechanics with citadels, such as deployment, reinforcement, access control, tethering, docking, personal storage. However, where citadels are optimized for defense, the engineering complexes are optimized for maximum industrial output. And like citadels, engineering complexes come in three sizes. The Raiderou um, medium citadel is named after the missile technology innovator that paved the way for the independent capsular researchers. And it's the most affordable upwell structure ever released, costing 40% less than an Astrohu citadel. It's going to make a perfect home for small industrial corporations or bold solo industrialists. The Asbel, um, large engineering complex is named after the inventor of faster than light communication in New Eden, and it allows greater generalization and the construction of capital ships. And I just have to say, the uh, art team has really hit, the, hit it out of the park with these new structures. Uh, I highly recommend heading out to Sissy, checking them out in action, flying around them. It's the detail is spectacular up close. And named after one of the co-inventors of the Calera warp drive, the Sodio Extra Large Engineering Complex uh, is the ultimate industrial hub. It's capable of the fastest manufacturing and research times in New Eden, as well as constructing enormous supercapital ships. I want to take a moment to thank all of the players who have been providing feedback on these structures and their design details, both through the forums and through the CSM. Uh, we've recently updated a lot of the details of the plan uh, and updated the forum thread with those details based on the excellent feedback and excellent insights that you've all provided. And I want to really give a big thank you to all of you who participated in that. Another big set of changes that are coming to New Eden and Ascension are the command bursts. 
Fleet boosting, off-grid boost is easily the most consistently requested balance change in the four years since I've been working on EVE Online that I've been hearing from players. I'm incredibly excited that we're now ready to release this revamp in just two weeks. Command Burst replaced the existing Warfare Link system for supporting your friends and allies with new area of effect buffs that are no longer tied to fleet hierarchy. This system will mean less overhead for fleet commanders. It means more room for skilled boosting pilots to shine, better counterplay for fighting against enemy boosts, and better feedback so everyone can clearly see what's going on on the battlefield. With these command boost changes, we also had the opportunity to revamp and reimagine the role of mining informant ships. After Ascension, all of the mining informant ships will be capable of supporting their allies' mining activities, controlling their own incredibly powerful mining drones, and fighting off threats if they should appear. Thank you, You're very welcome. <laughs> the ship on the screen here is the new Porpoise Industrial Command Ship. It's the most affordable and mobile industrial command ship that Eve has ever seen. Uh, and we're planning on huge buffs for the existing Orca and Rorqual vessels as well. <laughs> One big part of these <laughs> mining foreman ships is the revamp of the entire line of mining drones. We're adding new mining drones, new skills for mining drones, buffing the existing models like the Tech 1 mining drone, and introducing a whole new line of ice harvesting drones as well. Orr has also been engaged in some frankly questionable uh, research on captured rogue drone uh, specimens, and the results are the new excavator mining drones that you see on the screen there. These excavator drones come in ore mining and ice mining varieties. Uh, they're exclusive to the Rorqual, and they're capable of individually exceeding, under some circumstances, the mining yield of a whole exhumer. <laughs> Close asteroids is the circumstances. Since Rorquals are going to be back in the mining belts, ore has also vastly improved their defensive capabilities. When running their industrial core, the Rorqual will be among the tankiest ships in the game, and it'll even gain the ability to make itself and its entire mining fleet invulnerable for short periods of time with a new pulse-activated Nexus of Vulnerability Core. One of my favorite acronyms we've ever been able to add to the game. <laughs> mm. Ascension also brings one of the most anticipated UI features in the history of EVE from the community. The new fitting window with fitting simulation, formerly known as ghost fitting, is going to allow players to try out different fits and concepts right in the client. This has been a labor of love from a collection of uh, CCP devs who have worked on it as a side project and then got moved into being a main project. And we're really excited to get it out to you. Mm -hmm. Now, our amazing third-party de development community has been making great out-of-game fitting tools for a long time that are polished and feature-rich, and we're not trying to put them out of a job, we're not trying to replace them, because they will always have a, a place for power users for advanced use cases, complex use cases. But in-game fitting is going to be the perfect way to quickly test out fits in the client, see what the difference is in stats if you switch up a module, overheat a module, and we believe it will be extremely helpful to new players who may not be familiar with all the out-of-game options right away. And uh, we've got a little video to walk you through some of the features of the new uh, fitting window uh, that I'm really excited to show you. So let's say you've got a rifter here. You want to figure out how to fit it. You can open up the fitting simulation up in the top right there, and now you're working with the simulated rifter. On the left, you can browse modules and charges. This also allows you to look through any other ships available and uh, fit a simulation of one of those. But we're going to do the rifter for now, so we go over to hardware, and we can filter through low slot modules, mid slot modules, high slots, rigs, uh, drones. Um, how many of you guys are old enough to remember Quick Fit? Yeah, we got some better bets here. So one of the features I loved about that was the ability to filter on uh, what uh, fits with the resources available left on your ship, power grid and CPU, and we have that with the new fitting window. So let's say we want to fit some uh, turrets. We can explore all the options for weapons. We can turn on fitting resources, so now it only shows the small turrets because they're the only ones that you can fit onto the ship. You can explore through all of them, look at what it'll affect for the power grid and CPU. 
fit up your modules. Uh, let's say, let's go with some autocannons here. And uh, as that, uh, you double click on them, they appear on the ship and you can hover over them to see all the stats. And you'll also be able to load them with ammo uh, to actually see how they'll work in the game. But first, let's go to the me medium slots. Let's fit in there. We want to get an, a uh, prop mod to let ourselves go a bit faster. Browse right through there. This also is going to be a great alternative to the uh, market for just browsing through modules and seeing what's available. We're going to put uh, some shields on there, a shield extender. Let's get ourselves a scrambler so that we can tackle some opponents. There we go. And here we can now look at to put some ammo into these guns. So we can go through the whole list of charges in the game, but we really want to see what charges fit into these autocannons. So we can click on the autocannon right at the top there. That'll auto-populate with modules you have fitted. And then uh, pull in some hail. You also have the ability to actually choose favorite ammos as well to use really often, and those will be at the top of the list. But let's say we want to do a bit of exploring. So we fitted a bit of this rifter, but we want to go try something different. So we've got a saved Astero fit. We're going to pull that one up, open it up in Ghost Fitting. So this is a fit that we don't have all the skills for, but we're going to load it up anyways and explore it. So even if you don't have the skills to fit a ship, you can still see what the stats are, still actually try it out and see what you can work towards. So you've got the simulated Astero fit here. This is a ship we don't actually have in our hangar, but we're still exploring the fit. Uh, you can go look through all the modules, look at their ranges. You can also activate, overheat, and deactivate the modules and see how the stats change. So you see the navigation down there, you got the speed. This is with the microbe drive active, but you can click it and turn it red to overheat it, and you can see the speed increase right there in the fitting window. You can also turn it off. And you can also filter, you see there, there's the colors when you're in the module mode. And you can also filter based on what you have the skills for as well. So we can switch to that, and you'll see that we don't have the skills right now for the Covert Ops Cloak. But uh, we can show info on it, take a look what skills we need. And right there in the show info, we have the ability to add it to the queue, because we actually already have it injected. You, you get to buy it right from the market from there otherwise. So now we want to actually buy this ship. So we've integrated multi-buy and multi-fit right into the fitting window. So when we opened up multi-buy there, it showed us there wasn't any sisters uh, probe launchers available in this station, but we're not fancy, so we're going to switch down to a Tech 1, because we know we got some of those available. Switch out the fit, and then we can go right back to multi-buy. We can see the breakdown of the cost of the ship. And right in multi-buy, we can go ahead and buy everything we need for this ship. We'd be able to buy multiples of it if we want, hence the name multi-buy. Let's us know about uh, prices out of the normal. Go ahead and buy it all up. So there we now have all the items. And we can go right to fit ship. We can choose to fit one or multiples. And now we have a fully fitted stero. Switch on back to the normal fitting window mode, and we can see that the uh, cloak didn't activate because we don't have the skill for it, but everything else is on and ready to go. Beyond the addition of simulated fitting, the new fitting window also adds some of the really heavily requested player features, like improved drone management. You're going to be able to look at all of your drones, choose which ones you want to see active for the DPS. Drone control displayed, drone control range displayed right in the UI. And we're switching displaying effective hit point numbers to using average resist, another one of those little things that players have requested for a long time. Big thank you to everyone who's helped us test this on Sissy, people that have been on Sissy, putting in bug reports, letting us know what we need to polish. Um, we've been putting in a lot of work in this, especially CCP Carker has been putting a lot of work into this to make sure that it's nice and polished for Ascension. And uh, we're really excited to get into everyone's hands, especially all the hands of the new players. Let's talk a little bit about Tech 3 Destroyers. So, so two years ago, on a stage right over there, here at uh, Vegas, I unveiled the plans for Tech 3 Destroyers, uh, this new ship class that we we're going to be introducing the next year, including these pictures of the very early concept art of what became the Confessor and Jackdaw. These ships have been incredibly popular, but of course have also been overpowered in a lot of ways and have needed a few rounds of rebalancing over time. And the next round of this rebalancing is coming in Ascension. So, so with Ascension, 
With Ascension, we're re releasing a balance pass on tactical destroyers that tones down the overpowered aspects of these ships and tries to encourage the best elements of them, the decision making in battle. Uh, this balance pass has been developed with the aid of a group of player volunteers in the Tactical Destroyer Focus Group, people from all over EVE uh, who have volunteered through the forums. We've uh, had CSM members as part of that as well. Uh, and they have been a huge help for this. I want to give them a giant shout out. They've worked tirelessly to help provide us great feedback, uh, great ideas. Uh, and really, I want to thank them. Focus groups are one of the many ways that you players can get involved in the development of EVE Online. You can provide your insights to us. Uh, and really help change the direction of EVE development. People that participated in that focus group essentially were able to give us ideas that we decided were the correct ones and that we put into the game. And I think it's a really amazing part of EVE's development that we can work in partnership with you guys, our really passionate players, and uh, get the best ideas and make this game a lot better than it would have been otherwise. So thank you very much for that. So now for uh, some discussion of another one of the great features coming in Ascension, I'm going to bring, pass the mic over to CCB Larrikin. G'day Vegas. So I'm going to talk a little bit about NPCs and PVE and uh, tell you about one of the features that are coming out with Ascension. The empires are mobilizing. Their shipyards are expanding to meet the demand from increased clone production. And those shipyards need minerals. So the mining corporations of New Eden are ramping up. Deepcore Mining Incorporated and Mine Drill have both seen a significant increase in the mineral quota from the Kaldari Navy. While the Mimitar Mining Corporation has doubled its industrial fleet to meet the demand. These corporations and more will be increasing the number of mining operations they are running, and you will see them spread across the asteroid belts of New Eden. Learning from capsuleers, they are well organized with haulers that come and pick up the ore that they mine, actually mine. Now, it's been reported that some of these haulers are carrying valuable strong boxes. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just speculating here, but if one were to interdict one of these haulers, say through an act of piracy, you could probably get your hands on some of these strong boxes. These strong boxes can be used by anyone and they contain a variety of items, rare blueprints, some amazing skins like that bowhead skin you saw, or a really cool Blood Raider skin for your battle rock wool. But it's impossible to know what they contain until you actually try and open them. So do you want to take the chance of opening them yourself or sell them on the market and let someone else take that chance? But I do need to warn you guys, these miners and the haulers are a little bit more squirrely than you're used to. If you have low standings to the corporation that's doing the mining, or if you attack them, they will call for backup and their miners and haulers will try and walk away. And these response forces that come and back them up are based on capsule fleet compositions. <laughs> they will bring tacklers that run in and try and grab your critical ships, while their logistics will actually screen themselves behind their DPS and stay back out of the fight, just like you guys might when you fly logistics. And the combat forces will focus fire and anchor on a fleet commander who actually maneuvers the fleet around the battlefield to make sure it stays at optimal range for the weapon systems. <laughs> Just like your fleet commanders might. The good ones, anyway. They're going to fly the same ships that you fly, with the same roles and the same fittings. You're going to see Ventures and Hulks mining, Armageddon's nuding your logistics, and Burst's remote shield boosting. PvP in EVE is incredibly intimidating, but we believe that the skills that you learn, fighting NPCs should transfer over to fighting players. If you're fighting an NPC crucifier, it should show you some of the possibilities of a player flying crucifier. But look, I'm going to talk about this more uh, with the other game designers at the game design chat tomorrow. If you want to know more, come to that, and I'm going to hand it back to CCP Seagull now.
Thank you so much, guys, for all of those updates. That's some amazing stuff coming. But there's even more in Ascension. Our graphics team have completely re-engineered the most satisfying part of space friendship, explosions. <laughs> Even the wrecks that they result in look better. And the art presentation here at eVegas will show off way more of this and also talk about how the team did it. So if you're interested in this, just really go to that presentation. We're also revamping the character sheet in a big way and making skills way easier to work with across the whole client. And to gather all of this madness up in one place, we have created a feature tour video. So let's take a look at that. some news about ship skins in Ascension. So way back in 2014, this you're not ready for it. Way back in 2014 at FanFest, we showed you some of this super early research and development that we were doing to create a whole new type of ship skins by projecting patterns onto our ships. And at the time, our assets across the game were not actually ready for us to use this in the game across all the ships. But in the last two years, we have done an extensive set of renovations to all of our ships. And now we can finally start bringing skins to you that are based on this technology. So we're gonna start small, but you'll see more and more skins that use the potential of this technology in the future. So let's take a look at some of the first skins that will use this technology. Let me introduce you to the Star Captain skin for the Confessor. for the occasion to reveal this here at eVegas. <laughs> and this uh, skin will be available with the launch of Ascension. But this new technology also makes it way more feasible for us to do skins that cross over the racial hull boundaries. And I'm going to show you some uh, two examples of skins that we will release soon after Ascension. So not on launch day, but pretty soon after. So here's a red version. And here's a blue version. 
And as you can see, these are skins that can bring the same style to a whole fleet. And we'll be exploring that potential even more in the future, because we think that you might have a use case or two for that. <laughs> we also really want to celebrate both the Ascension expansion and that we are bringing out the first of this new type of skin. So with the expansion, we're going to take all of the ship skins that we have in the store now and do a massive sale. <laughs> so I'm going to show you uh, a few examples of what kind of prices that you'll see. Uh, here. <laughs> So these are just four examples. All these and all of the other skins in the store are going to come way down in price in celebration of Ascension. And speaking of a store, Another thing that is coming together at the Ascension launch is that we are finally able to launch an online store for EVE merchandise. <laughs> Getting this up and running has been a bit of a journey for us. But now we have found a proper way to do this with our partner, DPI, who have actually been doing the EVE store with us here at Vegas for the last two years. And they will also provide an online store for you with CCP-made designs, the same stuff that you've been buying here. And it will open on November 15th. So DPI are based here in the US, so shipping is still a challenge for some parts of the world uh, in terms of price and availability, and this is something that we will try our very best to improve on as we go along. We really want as many as possible of you to be able to get your hands on some of this stuff at sensible prices. And we'll also be adding new products over time, very much based on what you guys were asked for. So. <laughs> No, not what you ask for right now, but <laughs> but check this out when it launches in about two weeks, and I really hope you find something you like. All right. And then we have some news on the Eve mobile app. So at FanFest this year, we showed you our plans for an EVE Online mobile companion app. It's called EVE Online Portal, and I'm proud to announce that we are making the first version of it available on both Android and iOS, like we said at FanFest, on November 15th. And as you can see here in the little capture, the app brings you character information, in-game notifications, EVE mail, the EVE calendar, and the ability to get game time, Plex, and Aura. And we really hope that this will become a useful tool for staying in touch with EVE Online and also for reaching your fellow players on the go. This is the first step, and we'll of course be listening to you when it comes to future development. So try this out when it launches and help us make this a really great tool for you guys. <laughs> okay. To prepare for Ascension, we're also making some changes to the program that we have in place to support recruiting into EVE Online. So the current recruit program lets you invite other players to EVE Online, either through email or through a link that you create and that you can put publicly on your blog or on your stream or on your videos on YouTube, for example. And anyone who signs up through that link, they get an extended trial period in the current system. And the person who had the link, if a recruitee becomes a subscriber, then you get a reward in terms of Plex or game time. And 
for the recruiter, we're going to keep things exactly the same. But for the recruitee, the person that's coming in, the benefit of extra trial days obviously doesn't make so much sense anymore uh, in the new world of free alpha clones. So instead of extra trial days, we are going to equip the new recruit with some extra starting skill points. 250,000 to be exact. And we think this is a good way because this should help anyone who is recruiting to get their friend into something specific to go on some adventures together. So you could recommend a training plan and they could put some extra skill points towards that. And these skill points will go straight into the unallocated pool of the character that the recruitee chooses to redeem them to. And this change will go into effect with Ascension on November 15th. And all the current recruitment links that you might have out there, they will just keep working. So you don't have to do anything if you have one of these deployed somewhere. All right. And we're actually also looking at extending this same recruitment program to corporations later this year. <laughs> so to explain what it is that we want to do is to let corporations not just individuals, corporations who are willing to recruit brand new players, we would let them create a special recruitment link. And this link would go to a web page which has your corporation information on it. And anyone coming through and signing up through that route, they would get both these extra starting skill points, but they would also have an application created automatically for them, for the first character they create, into your corporation. Then you would still have to approve that they get in, so you still control who goes into your corp or not. But in this way, if your corporation is really great at recruiting, you also get the rewards to the corporation. <laughs> And so we'll be rolling this out as soon as we can after Ascension, at some point later this year, this addition to the recruitment program. We are just really so excited to bring this expansion to you. Everyone in the EVE team, everyone in CCP, we just cannot wait to ship this. And to show the depth and beauty of EVE Online, we have created a new Eve trailer. This game, you're not ready for it.
this game, you're not ready for it. excited to continue to make EVE Online the deepest, most beautiful space sandbox in the world. That's it from us today in the EVE Online team. But before we go into the party night here at EVE Vegas, I think we need a little something to get us started. CCP guard, was there, was there something you wanted to show us? Hey, hey, hey. Uh, I just want to give some love first to, uh, to these wonderful people I work with that make up amazing things. I'm lucky to work with them and they're awesome. Um, yeah, uh, I want to tell you about an idea, but like, first I want to check, um, is anyone in here familiar with the permaband? Okay. Well, it makes sense. It makes sense since we're kind of the only uh, band that I know of that has, has its own gaming company. So, um, we uh, had this idea um, after last in Vegas, we had so much fun and uh, we were looking so much forward to coming to this one that uh, we wanted to bring something with us, something for you. Uh, a party song inspired by the awesomeness we get from you to get you ready to party for uh, two more days. Uh, that would have been awesome if we'd made that, so. <laughs> But of course we did, of course we did. Uh, so I just want to give a shout out to my uh, friends in the permaband and the devs and the players that helped us make the song and the video and hope you like it. Yeah. 